bone marrow transplants. I picked this topic because my mother gave bone marrow last September. First, we're going to start with some questions you might have about bone marrow. First, what is bone marrow? Many people believe bone marrow is pieces of bone, but it's really a liquid. They call it liquid marrow, which is found on the back of the pelvic bone. Who needs bone marrow? The people who need bone marrow are patients who have blood cancers. This includes leukemia, lymphoma, sickle cell, and other cancers that are life-threatening. These patients come from around the world. What you will learn about your patient. The only things you will learn about their patient are the gender, age, disease, and what type of donation they will receive. The, pa the patient's doctor will decide which type of donation the patient will react to better. You can also send letters to your recipient, but they have to go through the registry first. The patient can also send letters, but the same thing has to be done. My mom got a letter and as you can see, they had to black out a ton of personal information. Lastly, how do you give bone marrow? There are two ways to give bone marrow that we will talk about later. Why you should donate. You could save a life. You always hear about people with cancer and you try to help them as much as you can. Sometimes though, you don't know how to make a big difference. Sometimes make a big difference. Now you can help somebody by giving them a simple bone marrow transplant. Only 50% of patients that need a transplant receive them. That shocked me. If all of America was on the registry, that percentage would be a lot higher or a lot lower. Also, 70% of the patients who have donors have donors in their family. That's why all of America needs to pull together to make the future of our world stronger. To save all those people who need our help, you just have to join the Need the Match Registry. This is a really easy process. You just go to the registry's website and fill out a form. Then you order a registration kit, which includes a mask swap. You just have to take these little Q-tip things and you just swab your teeth like this. It everywhere and you just then you just have to fill out a packet and send the packet and it's in the kit pack. There's no cost to you for anything because the registry gets to cover it all. There are certain guidelines that have to be met to be able to join the registry. One thing is that you have to be 18 to 60 years old. This is not to discriminate against anybody but because a younger body produces healthier cells. The best matches are between 18 and 44 years old, but every person on the registry counts. There are other medical guidelines that have to be met, too. There are, there are mostly diseases that you have to have, or you can or cannot have to join. You don't want to give your patient a condition that will make their recovery harder. Being on the registry costs no time to you. It costs no money to you except for your time. You, if you do get called, the registry pays for everything from gas to food to a motel for your stay. They will even pay if you have to take off work. The, ma the Be The Match registry only signs people up from the United States and Puerto Rico. If you live in another country, you call your registry and they should sign you up. Even though the only pe people in the, they only sign people up in these two registries, in these two countries. Patients come from all around the world. You have to be willing to donate to any patient because you never know what your patient will look like or where they will live. You won't even know. You won't even know their name. Because people are from all around the world, they have different backgrounds and people with the same racial backgrounds tend to have the best matches. This is why the registry is in need for people with diverse and rich ethnic backgrounds. These people need your help, and it's so easy to help through the Be The Match registry. There's nothing to lose, only lots to gain when you help people. 
This is a really easy way to make a big difference without changing your whole lifestyle. Remember, the Be The Match Foundation is hope for a new life for these people with cancer. The registry has been doing transplants for 25 years, has done 50,000 transplants, and has 10 million donor sign-ups. But that's not enough. There are people diagnosed with cancer every day. Give those people hope to get healthy. Now on to the two ways to give bone marrow. Bone marrow. This kind of is like a marrow surgery. It takes the marrow directly out of your pelvic bone. You are given anesthesia so that you do not feel anything during the procedure. They use a needle to take the marrow from the back of your pelvic bones. Pros to this procedure are there are no aches before the collection. You're usually back to your routine in two to seven days. Marrow is your marrow is fully restored in four to six weeks. Only one to five percent of your marrow is taken, and you get to leave the day you donated. The cons to this procedure are the anesthesia side effects, soreness in your lower back after surgery, and living activity for a few days. The other type of donation is called PBSC, a peripheral blood stem cell donation. It's a non-surgical procedure that is like a blood donation. This is now the most common form of donating. During the five days before the procedure, the donor gets a daily injection of a drug that increases blood forming cells in the bloodstream. The donor's blood is taken on the fifth day. It is taken out of one arm and goes through a a machine that is separated, that separates the blood forming cells and pushes the remaining blood up the other arm. Pros to this procedure are the side effects disappear after the donation. Normal routine, in, you're back to your normal routine in one to two days. You leave the same day you donated. Cons to this are aches before the collection from the drug and daily, and you have to get the daily injections. Now we're going to talk about steps of receiving bone marrow. This is what the patient would have to go through. Before the transplant, there is a health evaluation, which determines if the transplant or the treatment before the transplant are going to prevent or damage organs. This step is done by doing many tests and a doctor asking information about the patient's health history. And before any treatments start, the patient has to be transferred to a hospital. The transplant center decides exactly when the patient will enter and leave. A transplant line will be put in. A central line is a tube that goes directly into the vein in the patient's body. This is used when doctors give drugs, draw blood, and for the actual transplant of bone marrow or PBSC. A patient may still have a central line when they leave the hospital. It is very important to keep this tube clean to prevent infections. The next step is preparative regimen, which is a series of high-dose chemotherapy or radiation treatments. This is to kill the disease cells in your immune system and the blood-forming cells in your bone marrow. This will get rid of disease cells, make space for new marrow, and keep old cells from fighting the new cells that will help the person. This process could last for four to 10 days depending on the age, disease, and previous treatment of the patient. Transplant day or day zero is one to two days after the patient has completed preparative regimen. The new cells are donated normally the day before the transplant. The cells come in blood bags and are infused into the patient by an IV line or normally the central line. The process takes about an hour or longer but does not hurt. The marrow moves its way through the through the vein and settles in the bone marrow. Engraftment happens the next 30 days after the transplant. When this is this is when the cells from the transplant start to grow and form blood cells. Patients may receive blood cells or platelet platelet transfusions. They they get these transfusions often. Growth factors are used during during this time. Growth factors are drugs that help make the engraftment process quicker. Bacteria is a big factor of this part of the transplant. They, because patients are low on white blood cells, their immune system is very weak. 
Patients are given drugs to avoid infections, but they still have to take daily showers and are on a special low bacteria diet. During the next 70 days, the patient recovers. The immune system will get stronger and will, they will be able to leave the hospital. At first, the patient has to go to a transplant clinic almost every day for a while. If the patient lives far away, they'll have to get a house or apartment closer to their clinic. This process can really change the patient's life, but it won't change yours dramatically if you sign up on the registry to help save people of our world. Any questions? I got all my information on bethematch.org, which is the registry's website. Yeah, she gave um, the actual marrow surgery. Yeah, and she got information about her patient and said that he was back to his pre-surgery activities, which is very good for the patient. So is this something that in the future that you Yes, definitely. What age is it? Do you say you have a blood marrow? Uh, 18 to 60. 